Would the Laser Bros have felt bad about blinding the crew of a medical flight over Colorado? Would that still be funny or cool? Today, we see the world through the eyes of a Flight for Life worker who will never see the same way again. Vice President Pence's message to donors in Colorado won't be a secret, and that's more than we can say for Hillary Clinton's fundraiser here. We go verify why our Excel rates are going up again. A runner says she's tired of racing away from harassment on Colorado's trails. Oh, we need to change our dialogue. And who is this man? He's a champion and a mystery. Next. One night, we are eventually going to sit here and talk about a plane or a helicopter crash in Colorado caused by some jack wagon shining a laser pointer into a cockpit. There's been no shortage of warnings in recent years. But I have to think even the fools who engage in that kind of thing would never mean to target a medical flight for sick children. A man on board that flight told our Steve Steger about the flight where he saved a life and lost some of his sight. September 15th, 2017. We went to make a right turn. Justin Miseraca and his Flight for Life crew were about to land at Centennial Airport after a mission in New Mexico. Justin is a respiratory therapist, but he was sitting in the co-pilot seat, right. keeping an eye out Nothing. for other planes. As soon as I looked out the right window, saw a, a green flash, and I quick looked away. And uh, when I went to open up my eyes, I still couldn't see. Everything was totally green. Um, and what happens is it refracts off of the windows. They were able to get the plane landed and Justin got checked out. It wasn't until an eye doctor examined him a few days later, he realized what was wrong. And they said there was a burn all the way to the back of my eye. And now I'm uh, missing 30% of my vision in a upside down V. A permanent pie shaped portion of vision in his right eye is gone. We'll share the rest of this story the way his right eye would see it. He considers it a close call. I was only uh, half a millimeter from my optic nerve, so I could have been completely blind in my right eye, and that could have stopped me from working. And when you look at the numbers, there are a lot of close calls. The latest data from the FAA is from 2015, when pilots reported 138 laser strikes in Denver alone and more than 7,000 nationwide. In many of those cases, pilots reported being temporarily blinded. I, I would hate to see anybody else I get hurt or a plane crash. Justin hopes someone with a laser sees his story and understands the impact that tiny beam can have. Our patients need us to remember to keep coming to work and not be bothered by um, inconveniences. And we heard from the FAA late this afternoon. As of the middle of September, pilots reported 74 laser strikes in the Denver area so far this year. This isn't the first time Justin's experienced something like that. He was in a helicopter in the Springs last year when, a, when the cockpit was lit up by one of those lasers. And in fact, Flight for Life says this has happened to the organization's aircraft at least a dozen times in the last couple of years. And these People are caught. In fact, the Arapahoe County Sheriff told us that there was a report a few days before this one, a commercial flight that was headed to DIA. They were able to track down, based on the pilot telling them where the laser was coming from, yeah. track down that laser, and they confiscated it from the person and forwarded it to the FBI. Wow. All right, Steve, thank you. Yeah. Colorado Republicans are opening up Vice President Mike Pence's fundraiser to the state party to the press tomorrow. So the public's going to be able to hear the vice president's message to all those who paid $150 or more to hear him give it. Now, listen, we gave him a hard time when they had trouble selling tickets to this event and then said that it was popular demand that caused them to slash the prices. You know that story. But the Colorado GOP deserves some serious credit for allowing the public to hear what the donors hear. Remember when then-presidential candidate Hillary Clinton spoke at a fundraiser outside Governor Hickenlooper's house last year? Not only were journalists not allowed in, but several media reports described static noise generators or white noise machines being used to keep the press and the public from hearing what Hillary Clinton told her donors. So we applaud the Colorado GOP for not using a similar tactic. XL Energy power company that has a monopoly in large parts of Colorado has plans to jack up your rates over the next four years. The way they broke that news left a lot of customers confused. So our Verify team and Brandon Ritterman try to bring some clarity. I got the email from XL Energy. A bunch of you got the email from XL Energy. And all it really says in here is there's a change in electricity prices. It doesn't say what kind of change, but it does have a link to this, the actual official notice which talks about a rate review. It isn't until you get to the small print under this part here that says customer benefits 
that you find out what they mean is an increase in how much you pay for electricity. Apparently that's a benefit in the eyes of Excel. And it isn't until you look even further down on the even finer print that you see an idea of how much your electricity bill might go up. It got a bunch of you asking questions and wanting us to verify. So basically all of this reads to you like, just trust us. Exactly. And you don't. And I don't. <laughs> Max Gimmelstein <laughs> says he read the fine print and it only confused him more. How much is your bill going up? From this, it'd be difficult to tell, right? So they provide a table that frankly does not give enough information to calculate that. And then in the bottom of the last paragraph, it seems to imply that there's roughly 24, 25% increase over a four year period. But he's not so sure about that because the notice has different numbers all over the place. So we went to Alice Jackson, a vice president who deals with regulators for Excel, and asked her the same thing. How come he can't just plug in like his actual bill and see what the new rate would be? Oh, sure. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can get there. <laughs> so if his average monthly... Yeah, that's not going to get you there either from here. It's not as simple as that. So don't feel too bad, Max. If she couldn't figure it out, you probably weren't going to either. There's a really boring technical reason for this, which you can read in the story online. But the bottom line is you have to look at a different document someplace else for an apples to apples comparison, which shows the typical monthly residential electric bill would go from $71.96 to $78.88 over four years, an increase of almost seven bucks. 9.6%. Basically, if you pull up your own electric bill and add 9.6%, that's how much you can expect to pay four years from now if XL gets its way. Max says he just wishes XL would provide an online tool in its email to show you that. Concisely tell me what it is that's happening, concisely tell me how it's going to impact me, and concisely tell me what it is I'm going to get for it. XL made no excuses on that score. Your customer has a really good idea. Even though the notice makes it sound like this all could change next month, Public Utilities Commission first needs to hold hearings. That's not going to happen until the spring, so things are on hold until then. We do know that Excel wants to raise about a quarter billion dollars with the rate hike, and the notice doesn't go into much detail about how they plan to spend it. But every nugget that we have learned about what might happen is in this story on 9news.com. We're going to get an answer as to whether or not presidential electors in Colorado must reflect your will as voters or whether they can just cast Colorado's electoral votes for whomever they please. You'll recall that Clinton electors tried to vote for moderate Republican John Kasich last year in anybody but Trump strategy. Republican Secretary of State Wayne Williams intervened, so they sued him. He then threatened to claim immunity to block the suit. But now both sides have agreed to drop that business and just go to a court to get a straight answer to the question. Are Colorado's electors bound by the will of the people? this could eventually go to the Supreme Court. Me Too has been the message from so many American women of late, joining the nationwide chorus of women no longer willing to remain silent about harassment. Add Caitlin Morgan's voice to theirs. She's an endurance coach who can often be found running trails around the Denver area. She told us about all the unwarranted attention she gets while working out and her plans to change it. Running is a stress release. It makes me happy. It's fun to go out and just feel like you're free. Some people try and approach you, maybe based on the way you're dressed, and say, hi, I would like to meet you. You really just don't want people to bother you. You're in your own headspace. And being approached in maybe a derogatory way or the way that you're dressed is sometimes not always called for. It's scary. Our norm in society is that at any point in time, something could happen. Yeah, um, I'll try and keep it appropriate. I didn't write him in the blog because I've got family that's young that reads the blog. A guy said, wow, look at that ass, or look at that rack. Some guys whistle. Had a guy follow a gal while running. Talk about the legs behind you. All these kinds of things happen while running. I've wanted to punch a few people. It's my running blog, and I came up with the post because there was an article that one of my friends had posted about how we need to change our dialogue. No one needs to experience that, or run in fear, or walk in fear. These things happen all too often, and we let it. So we need to change the dialogue of when we see it happen, saying, oh, they were wearing that, so they asked for it. Instead, we need to stand up for that person. We can help be the change. 
Caitlin is not going to be shamed off the trail by somebody else's shameful behavior. She's headed to do a 60 mile trail run in the Arizona desert this weekend. Want to take a moment and salute the resilience of the Glenwood Springs High School football team. They got the first win of their season over the weekend. You're thinking kind of late in the year. They're probably not a very good team. Oh, they are. They'd won four prior games, but had to forfeit them all because of an error made by an adult. It was an eligibility issue for one player. The principal tells us he takes all of the blame. They self-reported their error to Chassa and fell out of playoff contention as a result of their forfeited wins. So tonight, our congratulations to the Glenwood Springs Demons. 1-0 and and undefeated in honesty as they start what they're calling their second season. Denver set a record high today, so of course it's going to snow tomorrow. Name that Denver Bronco. Look closer now. Are you sure you know who it is? Send us the answer during the break. Hashtag hey next. And there was a day when foosball was an enormous sport, and one of the biggest names was in our backyard. He's still here, just not as everyone remembered him. Next. Just Kathy Sabin. Of course, if there's a record high of 84 in Denver, there will be snow the next day. That's the forecast. Yep, that high way above the average of 62, a record that was set back in 1959, 2007, and 2014. Powerful cold front on the way already tonight, and that's going to bring those temperatures down. The highs today way above average. Tomorrow we'll see the numbers come down about 25 to 30 degrees. Moisture is limited with this fast moving storm. You'll look for cloud cover during the morning drive, rain by lunchtime, a rain snow mix in the afternoon, and it could be well out of here by this time tomorrow night. Not expecting much in the way of accumulation here in the city. A lot of melting and then when skies clear, temperatures very cold tomorrow night. Tonight, mild lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, highs in the 40s and lows in the teens and 20s. We get a nice warming trend ahead of a second stronger colder storm that could mean a bit of cold and snow for Halloween. But cold and snow is just what resorts like Keystone are looking for tonight, Kyle. Kathy, thanks. All right, hate to break this to you, but your Halloween costume lost the contest. So did mine. Broncos Brandon Marshall wins, hands down. Halloween's still nearly a week away, but who's going to top this? Brandon Marshall dressed up as the face of the Broncos, Von Miller. And I mean, the guy nailed it. He's got the cowboy hat. He's got the big, thick glasses, the old spice there in one hand, you know, because of Von's endorsement deal. And the other hand, yep, that would be a VHS tape. Not going to read out loud what it says on the tape in case the kids are watching. But let's just say that that's the particular tape that Mr. Miller refused to play, pay a woman blackmail in order to keep secret. And apparently, Vaughn is willing to laugh about the whole thing, including the tape, because otherwise, let's be honest, we would never see Brandon Marshall again. We catch up with a local sports legend from days gone by. His sport isn't celebrated as it once was, and neither is he. Then we meet a young Coloradan who can smoke you on a hike. He'll even bring along his teddy bear. I feel very proud of myself. Next. There are neighbors we see often and know nearly nothing about. Photojournalist Tom Cole's work often appears here on Next and often headed home at night. Tom would encounter a neighbor he didn't know. Here's a look ahead at Tom's series, Spear. Back in the um, 70s, 80s, 90s, it was probably one of the premier places to play. We had some of the top players in the world. Todd Lafredo. Tom Spear. I watched Tom win his first major in Boulder, ten to fifty thousand dollar tournament. He was very smart, always articulate, immaculately dressed, in tip top condition his entire life, and everything changed. Wow, my yeah. friends were real supportive. It just sparked me at the end there. I thought I was going down. Terry's yeah. awesome. About a year ago, I got contacted from the Arvada police that they found a man in a field and they thought maybe it was him. I saw him a lot uh, when I would ride home on my bike and I became curious. I was just curious who this guy was. And he wasn't just another homeless person. There was something about him 
that made me curious. I, I think when people watch the Spear series, they're gonna get some questions answered about who he is, especially if you live in Arvada. Uh, you're going to learn a little bit about Tom Spear, but there is so much more to learn about him. From some people already, kind of like, uh, why, why, are you, why are you doing this to Tom Spear, and what is he going to benefit out of this? And, you know, I think it's a community, especially in Arvada and all over the place where there may be homeless people or people who are a little different or whatever. Uh, we need to get to know people. And the more you know about someone, uh, the more you come in contact, uh, the better off you are as a person. Uh, I think the more connections we can make with people in our community, the better off you are as a person. And I think we will bring our community of Arvada and other places together by knowing more about someone like Tom Spear. Spear, the work of our Tom Cole and Cody Broadway. It is a story told in episodes. The first will air here on Next, one week from today on November 1st. Assuming that I cannot lose my job for recommending that you watch another network story, I got to tell you, CBS did a great one that you should see. It's a piece on Alex Collins, running back for the Baltimore Ravens, who trains by Irish dancing. He says it's his secret to quick feet in the NFL. He started dancing on a dare from the daughter of his high school football coach. She thought that it would help him prepare for the NFL draft, and it totally did. Alex now says he can watch tape and recognize that his moves on the football field come straight from Irish dance. I'm going to be watching for this next time I see a Ravens game. There's a link on the next Facebook page. The most Colorado thing we saw today is Buddy Backpacker, also known as Christian Geiger. He's a nine-year-old kid from Crested Butte who just finished the Triple Crown of Hiking with his folks. He is the youngest person to successfully tackle the three major U.S. long-distance trails, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. He started doing these hikes when he was five years old, eight thousand miles in all and when you get up to the top of the mountains you can see all these beautiful things that if you were just on the ground you wouldn't be able to see he prefers to hike with his pooh bear he packs cookies for snacks his favorite wildlife bears that is the most colorado thing we saw today it's a sign that doesn't really have any teeth just like the dog behind it and your feedback about the fact that I'm a tool. Next. It's a sign, two of them actually, spotted by next viewer Fran Scannell near Deer Creek Canyon. Toothless dog ranch. And beware of dog. Fran said, I reckon the dog will gum you to death. I wish I could credibly say the word reckon. Send us the signs you see. Email next at 9news.com. A lot of feedback about Spear, the project that you will see here on 9 News beginning next Wednesday. Nate writes, we see Tom in our neighborhood all the time. It'll be fantastic to find out his story. Natasha says the same. Says, I've always wondered what his story is. Love that this will be shared. Michael Johnson write in, writes in saying, I see him every week walking with his bike. He seems like such a good man. As our Tom Cole said, getting to know Tom Spear, one of our neighbors, hopefully will bring everybody together. Well, there's probably no bringing together me and David Mead who tweeted, Kyle, how does it feel to be a useful tool of the Republican National Committee and Mike Pence? I don't know, David, same way it feels to be a tool of the Democrats and Hillary Clinton whenever somebody accuses me of that. I don't know, brother. See you next time.